Hey, we have another integral here today. This one's from MIT 2012, problem five. We have the integral from zero to one, sine, cos inverse, x, dx. Okay, I know I've done a few problems that are really similar, and I'm not, I might even have done this exact problem, probably not with the um, with these bounds, but I may have done sine or cosine, but I want to do this one a little bit differently. So yeah, doing a u sub would probably be pretty straightforward and quick, but I'm gonna do it a different way. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna still do, we still need to do something with this. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna call this a t value. Because this is an inverse, we can then say from that that cosine of t equals x. Then what I wanna do is let's draw our triangle and get a feel for the proportions of the sides and for this angle t. So this equation will tell us if adjacent over hypotenuse is going to be x, then we can write this ratio as x over one. And that's how I got these two sides here. What is this third side gonna be? So what we just, to find this third side, what we'll do is we'll use the Pythagorean theorem. So that'll just be our side a squared plus x squared equals one squared. And we just wanna solve for this a. So we'll have a squared equals one minus x squared. Then taking a square root, we'll have a equals square root of one minus x squared. Only being, we're only interested in the positive value here. Okay, it's a positive side, so we'll just use this positive value. Then next, let's get back to our sine expression. So if, co if our cosine is t, then this expression here is just sine of t. But with this triangle, we can now find sine of t. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's just gonna be square root of one minus x squared over one, which is just this. So what that allows us to do is we can just rewrite this integral. We don't have to do a substitution. We don't have to update our bounds. We can just plug in for sine of t, this square root of one minus x squared value. Okay, so now that we have the integral here, what do we notice? Well, I don't know if you recognize, but this is actually the equation for just a quarter circle. Between zero and one, we just have our first quadrant of the unit circle. You just notice if you plug like a zero in here, our first point, you're gonna get back just this one, and then at one, it's zero. Uh, you also could think about if this, if you set this equal to y and you square both sides, you get the more familiar form. Rearranging, you'd have x squared plus, like if you rearrange this, you could get to x squared plus y squared equals one, maybe the more familiar equation for a circle. And so all we need to do is we just need this area here for this quarter circle. And we have a circle, the inner circle, the radius is one, okay? We know the area of the circle is pi r squared. So the area of the full circle would just be pi when radius is one. But we have a quarter circle. All we need to do is divide by four. And so our solution will just be pi over four. That's it. Thought it was a fun problem today. So thank you everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day. So actually solving this is pretty easy because even though we don't have the full circle, we can kind of, okay, that's, that's like the worst circle. That's not even... Yeah. <laughs>